Let's jump Total War here, and today we've got a Saving Your Disaster Battle playing as Repulse the Lionies going up against Kimri, uh, where we're slightly outnumbered. The bounty power is not horrendous, but the guy said that he's tried this battle quite a few times and hasn't been able to win it, and that basically the enemy artillery sort of does him in. So I went in and had a look at the battle just to see what the bounty power was like, and the bounty power definitely isn't favorable. Um, it's just that the order resolve is basically saying it's even, but once we get into the battle it's uh, it's definitely not so let's jump in here and see what we can do to help so I think the the big thing is that if the enemy artillery is a major concern I think newer players really struggle with with the enemy artillery it's not that difficult to deal with if you've got the right units which you do um, Henry Le Massif over here because he's on a fast mount, you can use him to go up ahead of the enemy forces and annoy the artillery. Now, you're probably going to get hit a little bit, but the point of um, annoying the artillery is while they're shooting, they're not moving, and the rest of the army is marching forward. What this does is that you're able to start engaging the enemy forces while the enemy artillery is not properly engaging your forces and essentially shooting a bad target. And by doing that, you are buying time for your forces to kill their easy stuff. And then you can deal with their hard stuff later. Sometimes there's a lot of value in delaying enemy forces. I'm going to reorganize. This is this is not how I want to start. I want to put the cavalry over here. It's, just, it's, a, it's a very small map. I'm going to put my back to the wall here and stand our ground. At this point here at least. And we can use these damsels to give semi-regular pit stops for Henry okay I'll put her in a control group there and like I said put him over there okay and then it just takes practice to sort of learn how to dodge shots it's easier to do on small amounts hippogriffs are I, I would I would basically say like this there's three tiers of difficulty of on flying mounts right <clears throat> there's like the Pegasus, which is the easiest because they're super fast and they're small. Then there's the um, Hippogriffs and Eagles, which are sort of a medium sized mount, so medium difficulty dodging. And then there's the big mounts, like dragons. Those are the slowest, hardest ones to dodge. I don't recommend using dragons for dodging because they're just really raw power. You can dodge small projectiles or, or slow projectiles, but. Cannons are a lot more difficult. Can cannons and guns are a bit difficult. Okay, so what we're doing here, we're not necessarily trying to waste their ammo, but delay them. If we can, if we can, if we can get them to actually shoot their own troops, that'd be useful. Copping a few hits over here, but it's okay. We got, we got magic. How much do we have? Not much actually. Just trying to get them to shoot their own troops, because. What better thing, see there's the bounce of power there, than to waste the enemy artillery, than to even have them, there we go, just hit their own units there, kill their own troops as well. And just do this with feigning attacks. Like I said, works a lot better on Pegasuses, or Pegasi, whatever, because you're a lot faster, harder to hit. But it can still work with this. I wouldn't recommend doing this with dragons. Okay, I need to head back now. He's got to go pick up some heal health. But we've delayed the enemy artillery there. So... God damn it, I can't hit me there. Gotta improve my own dodging skills. Yeah, cavalry is not ideal on this map here. This map is just super small. Very hard to flank them. When you just can't get around them. I mean, they could essentially stretch from one side to the other. And this is on large unit scale. Imagine if it was on ultra. So I need to pick up a few more heals before he moves back out there again. But it's uh, quite handy that we had a life visit here. Now, as for our cavalry, I think I'll... S I'm going to take them off this control group, actually. And I'm going to use... 
this one in control group one, this one in control group two, and go around different ways. Oh, did he get hit again by something? Was it the bone giant? Didn't really see. Okay, whiz around then. We'll try to get at the uh, the catapults. Yeah, that bone giant on smaller unit scales. Basically, the smaller the unit scale, the more powerful the bone giant becomes because it doesn't decrease the amount of damage it actually produces. So that's Cetra there. We're just going to charge into the uh, the skeleton archers here just to actually get, you get around. How are you going over here? Mm, I mean, they're just chariots. You should be able to handle that. Get around over here. Just ignore Cetra. Okay, this will be the Screaming Skull catapults essentially dealt with. Okay, Bouncer Power hasn't really improved that much though. Because we did take a little bit of damage, but we have taken away one of their most dangerous units. I, can't, I just can't really get at that uh, Bone Giant, nor should we be using Cavalry to sort of dodge it. Okay, Bouncer Power has just improved just a slightly. It's still not in our favor, but it is a slight improvement. So they're getting meh sort of kills. Once that bone giant runs out of ammo, I'm sure their bounce power will go down significantly. I just I don't have anything that can really snipe it right now. But you know, while they're shooting at us, we're shooting at them as well. Not getting great hits, but better than nothing. God damn, these chariots! What the hell? They should have easily taken it out. That's so, right. We'll get over there and help them out. Get rid of those chariots. Just pick them apart a little bit at a time. Last thing you want to do with cavalry is like charge head first into a big blob. It's like the worst thing you can do with them. They're not good at it. Doesn't matter if you flank them or whatever. Flanking doesn't really do much. What you want to do with flanking is flank smaller groups of units. Like this. Flanking here is actually quite useful. Yeah, you pick up some of this heal. Go take out that bone giant, but not not all of you. Actually, no, all of you go over there because I reckon they'll dedicate a few units to go back here. Most of our bouncer power is tied up over here, and they I think they're going to be aware of that. Ugh, we need to spread out a little bit.
Okay, now Rapants would be pretty useful against it, but not all of the cavalry will. So send them up against those Ushabti there. Bouncer power is even now, but let's not get lazy. One of our units essentially got nuked. Yeah, the problem here, not enough... Yeah, like by a lot, not enough crowd control. Okay, that guy's going down. Good, need to get these guys back over here because we're going to get overrun really quickly. I got nothing protecting the archers now. Okay, good. There's a sharp tier gone. Bone Giant's almost gone, although it would almost use up all of its ammo anyway. They just gotta, there's nowhere else for them to go. They just gotta hold on until the cavalry arrive. Um, Sepulchral Stalkers would be a bad choice to attack. Okay, Bone Giant's gone. Cool, move. Uh, Sepulchral Stalkers are anti large, but I just, I gotta get rid of them. Do we have uh, Knights of the Realm here? I mean, they're technically at it into that as well. <laughs> I, just, I know that they're actually very good against cavalry, so I think I'm just going to try to avoid them for the time being. Cool. The archers are back to firing again. Bouncer power's looking good. And we've got this. The main thing with cavalry is you got to make sure that they don't ever get cramped in a fight. they got to have mobility. This is why this map's so difficult to maneuver around. But luckily, because you weren't playing on ultra unit scale, it really wasn't that difficult to maneuver around. It made it, their forces a lot smaller. Or a bit smaller. Enough to make a difference. And there's the army losses. Pretty sure one of these guys, the Spearman at Arms, got totally wrecked, but... Eh, it's probably the least useful unit in the battle. Alright, then we'll have a little look at the campaign and see how things are going. Yeah, it's always close victory. Oh no, it should still be alive. It just, I guess it just shattered and ran away. But yeah, definitely not an impossible battle. Just, just gotta know how to deal with it, I guess. Delaying the enemy artillery, especially the Screaming Skull Catapult, really helped. Because a lot of their bounce of power was tied up there. That's how we were able to get an army loss penalty relatively early. Like, five or six of their units got wiped out just because of the army losses. And the, the reason why that happens is when you dish out so much damage to the enemy, especially early on, um, that the game basically adjudicates that you're winning by such a large margin that it basically just gives you the win. Doesn't It doesn't force you to have to kill those last few units. For a cost. To the flame. Yeah, I think you use some money. Campaign can't be going too badly if you've already got control of Henry. Last, if I remember, recall, it's like turn 42. Yeah, turn 42. Weak, right, so you set up an ambush and it just failed. That's fair enough. Um, yeah, it was probably going to... F mm, Okay, so Cetra's turn would have come before them, so it's okay to put an ambush in front of an enemy agent if that enemy agent's turn comes after the person you're trying to ambush, because they can only detect that on their turn. So you probably put it too close to actually Cetra's forces and got detected, because the closer you are to an enemy army or a um, agent, the higher your chance of actually getting caught, like discovered. So they're still stronger than you, but you've got tons of money coming through, so you can definitely afford another army. 
So I'd get on top of that right away. You got plenty of peasant capacity. Unless unless you actually lost an army over the end turn, which I have no idea what happened. But the campaign looks pretty healthy, so we'll leave it there. Anyway, guys, that's the end of this one. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave a sub if you did. And I'll see you next time, fuckers. Appreciate you.